All right, you're good to go. Hi there, it's Professor Amanda Moore, and I'm excited to talk to you about M. Butterfly. Let's get started. So the first question we have for M. Butterfly is, why did you choose this play specifically for English 1B? Well, considering that our theme for our semester is multi-ethnic literature of the United States, M. Butterfly is an excellent fit. It fits the theme of identity very well uh, because we have a main character in Gallimard, Rene Gallimard, who is a misfit and he wants to feel superior. He wants to feel like he's man enough. But in doing so, he, has, he finds himself putting down Asian men and women to do so. In, um, also, a second reason is that Madame Butterfly, the opera on which this story is based, is a really common story told in the West. Um, and in this story, the single story is perpetuated. The idea of the helpless um, Asian woman who sacrifices herself for a white man. And um, I chose it so that we can see how David Henry Wong is debunking these, these stereotypes and revealing flaws in white supremacy. Given what's already been assigned for class and what the students have read so far, which parts of Act 1 are especially important in relation to the content of this class? Oh, well, right away we see Song Li Ling um, providing an immediate critique of the single story coming from the TED Talk um, by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. And we see this when Song Li Ling says to Gallimard, consider it this way. What would you say if a blonde homecoming queen fell in love with a short Japanese businessman? He treats her cruelly, then goes home for three years, during which she prays to his picture and turns down marriage from a young Kennedy. Then when she learns he has remarried, she kills herself. Now, I believe you should consider this girl to be a deranged idiot, correct? But because it's an Oriental, Oriental who kills herself for a Westerner, ah, you find it beautiful. Now here in the Song Li Ling's quote, we see her, well, him dressed and acting as a woman, um, which does make it confusing. <laughs> Song Li Ling is immediately challenging Gallimard's white supremacy and his belief that Asian men and women, that all Asians are, are inferior to white people and should be subservient. Does Gallimard pick up on it and learn from his mistakes? Well, you have to keep reading to find out. <laughs> what should I be looking for as someone interested in reading M. Butterfly? Well, if you are interested in reading M. Butterfly, and I hope that you are, the first thing that I would say to look out for is the humor. This play is immensely funny. And um, a lot of the humor is sarcasm, sarcasm, a lot of double meanings, a lot of playing on our expectations. So find the humor, enjoy the humor, and figure out what the humor is saying about stereotypes. A lot of times sarcasm and irony are used to expose the flaws in stereotypes. The next thing that I would like you to know is that we cannot fully trust Rene Gallimard the main character. He's the one that's speaking for the entire play and it's in his, he is telling us the story. We, for most of the play, we are actually inside Gallimard's retelling of the story. It starts with him in a prison and he's telling us that we are his ideal audience. He's hoping that we're going to believe him, we're going to understand him and we're going to empathize with him. And he wants us, get this, to be jealous that he has been loved and loved by a perfect woman. Now, that's the thing, is that we cannot fully trust him. So I need you to put on your thinking caps, right? And play a game called The Doubting Game and a play called The Believing, a game called The Believing Game. Game. <laughs> the Believing Game is you have to try to understand Gallimard's side, even if you don't like it and even if you don't agree with it and figure out why he feels the way he feels. The second game is the doubting game. And you put on a different hat where you doubt every single thing Gallimard says. And so that's a great game for you to see both sides um, and to also strengthen your critical thinking skills. The last thing I will say 
is that Gallimard is not a good critical thinker. And that's another reason it fits with the content of our course. Because he's not a good critical thinker, he makes a lot of thinking mistakes. And it's up to us as we keep reading to find out what all of those mistakes are. I hope you enjoy Act 1, which stops at Act 1, Scene 13. And as we continue, I hope that you gain a lot from reading this text. Thank you for watching. Thank you for answering these questions, Professor Moore. We'll see you next time.